Hello viewers and welcome back to another episode. This is just a quick episode today, a quick look at uh, one of my old laptops that, that I own. Um, I do like collecting sort of unusual computers um, and this is certainly an unusual beast to say the least in that I can't find out any information out about it at all online. Um, apart from the fact that um, Amazon or somebody on Amazon was selling a battery for it, I think around about 2015. Um, they're suggesting the model is, um, or the processor is the SX, a 386SX 20 megahertz. Um, the model of this is a um, HQ1999, a flex note, HQ1999. It was made in Japan. Let's just pop the screen open. Um, unfortunately, this one's not working. Um, it needs a 12 volt power supply. Um, I have powered it up. I'll show you in a bit uh, what it actually does do. Um, but all it does basically is flash up on the lights so quickly, and that's it. I suspect a computer this age has probably got um, suffering with the old capacitor issue, um, which a lot of computers from this time period are. Now let's take a quick look around it. Um, you've got your keyboard latches on the front there. No Windows uh, key on there. This is before Windows 95. I suspect this probably would have been fitted with DOS and Windows 3.1. Uh, around this side here, you've got a standard three and a half inch floppy drive. Um, I think that's the battery cover. Yeah, that's the battery cover there. Let's see if that will come out. There we go. Um, it's a battery pack, model HQ 1999, 7.2 volts, 1700 milliamps. Made in Japan. Uh, I should imagine that's probably a nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium battery. Um, it's not leaked, thank goodness. Um, sometimes when they're left in like this, they do tend to leak, but this one seems to be okay. Uh, on the side there, you've got a couple of um, telephone ports, so obviously you've got a built-in modem. Uh, around the back there, uh, that's your jet button for the battery, DC in. Um, I think the centre pole was um, plus tw uh, 12 volts, the plus. Um, the easy way to check that, by the way, if you ever, ever get a computer or any other device that's got no power supply, just uh, do a continuity check on the centre pin to earth. And uh, then if you know um, if it beeps, then you know basically that's the earth on the centre. If it doesn't, obviously it's the um, plus. Um, I think that's a mouse port. It's got a serial, parallel and VGA out. It's missing its flap. And on this side, um, there's a port under there. Let's drop that down. It's actually blanked off. It looks like some kind of um, docking station port under there. Trying to be careful of the plastics because, uh, as you know, with these old computers, they can get quite brittle. Saying that, though, I'll do a close up of that in a second. It's actually where the paint's worn, it's actually showing metal, it's shiny underneath metal. So, I wonder if it's some kind of magnesium alloy. Let's have a quick look at the underside. Looks like uh, somebody may have been in this already because the rubber feet are missing on the corners there, and the two at the back are missing. Uh, I say there's the model number on the bottom there, HQ1999, DC 12 volts, 1.5 amps, serial number LV002064. So it's, it's quite an early serial number. And it says made in Japan. And it's got the FCC regulations on there. Now on the lid as well, there's a little uh, charge indicator just there. It's just starting to bulge um, on the hinge mechanism area. Um, I guess over time the stress of opening and closing makes the plastic kind of brittle. Um, the screen's getting a little bit flimsy. Uh, again, computers of this age do tend to suffer with that, so I'm uh, opening it gently. I think it must have an active matrix display, one of those LCD panels, because uh, you've got the contrast and the brightness there. It's probably um, black and white, monochrome. Got some LED indicators there. Um, power speed, charge low battery, hard drive, floppy drive, num lock, scroll lock and caps lock. Um, and on the top here, there's a little cover, just pop that open. There we go. And inside there is a little memory expansion module. Uh, let's pop it out. There we go. I suspect that's probably around about between four and eight megabytes. I'll have to get the model number of that if anybody's interested. Um, this says Smart 1991 for the year, and the model number 
SMR 01286 forward slash 04286. I wonder if the 286 could be to do with the processor to match up to the processor speed. Yeah, there would have been a mass co-processor there, it's probably an optional upgrade. Um, it looks quite tidy in there. Yeah, I will be opening these up, I'll probably do that in another video. So I'm going to do an exploratory uh, video on it and s see if there's any leaking capacitors. But you never know, it might be just something simple. Um, I think that's all there is to say about it for the moment actually. I'll just uh, show you what it does with the powering up. Got a bench power supply set for 12 volts. So when you do the power switch, it's one of those ones that flicks back. The LEDs just flash momentarily and you hear a click on the inside. And the click is possibly the hard drive. So there you have it, um, that's the Flex Note HQ 1999, made in Japan from around about 1990. Uh, incidentally, if anybody knows any history about this uh, brand, or the computers they did back in the day, please uh, let me know in the comments, it'll be interesting to hear about it. Um, as I say, um, quite a few different manufacturers back in the day when uh, portable computing was getting quite big were throwing their uh, ideas into the ring and making their own machines. Some survived, some brands survived, and some didn't. Um, I think this is one of those brands that didn't survive. It's the same with video cameras as well. Sometimes you'll find uh, a manufacturer did need one, the odd one or two models or something, and sometimes they were even a clone just to get their name out there. Well, I think that's just about it for this video. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll be seeing you.